got to hit him with a guau one time. Guau! <laughs> Made from scratch. An intimate look into the lives of your favorite celebrities as they make the food they grew up eating with the people who know them best and made them who they are today. And each episode will be filmed entirely by our guests. From slicing to selfies. On this episode, singer, songwriter, and actress Becky G chops it up with her younger sister Stephanie. Together, they'll share memories with grandma. When my grandma would make her salsa extra spicy, oh we would ask her like, oh, like, who are you mad at today? Talk about her first performance. She dedicated a little song to me and everything. I Felt did. Special. And explore what it takes to make it in the industry. Que pasa mi gente, it's your girl Becky G and I am here with my little hermanita Stephanie and we are going to be cooking ceviche as well as aguachiles made from scratch. So we're gonna start with the prep. We're actually gonna start by washing the shrimp first. Yes, so let's do, let's do it. We've got some raw shrimp here for the aguachile and we've got some jumbo cooked shrimp for our ceviche. That. Also, y'all are gonna probably roast us for this, but um, the shrimp, the cooked shrimp, is a little frozen. It's a little. It's literally like on the dice to mama, like, oh, make sure you take the chicken out so when I get home from work, I can cook it. I can cook dinner. And then she's like, I'm five minutes away, and you're like, oh shit, I forgot to take the chicken out. I've got like different knife options here for you. Be very careful. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm like a pro fish fillet. Or fish fillet? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm a pro fish fillet. I, I just this knife might be a little out. too big. Cool. The vein is on the other side. <laughs> oh, I did the other one. You did it from the inside. Oh, man. Okay, this, I'm showing all my cards too early. Let's, um, let's just tell them what really happens when we're in the kitchen. <laughs> she usually runs the show. Sometimes. And sometimes. I just follow suit. See, now you're doing the right side. Mira. Wow! wow. <laughs> like Grandpa used to always I know. do that in the kitchen. Yeah, he hits us with a guau every now and then. It's not wow, uh -huh. it's guau with the G. With the G. With the G. Shout out to our grandparents. We're so lucky. We had a very close childhood because our mom and dad got married super young. My mom, by the time she was 23, had all four kids. Mm -hmm. So it was me, my brothers, and this little mujercita right here. It was kind of like a village that raised us. It wasn't just our grand, uh, our parents, but also our grandparents. I hope we don't let them down with the, our version of... Oh, if Grandma, ta if grandma was coming yeah, to if taste grandma this... Grandma was coming to taste this, that would be... I don't know. Ooh, a whole different pressure. Might be a problem. Growing up, we didn't eat too much seafood. No, we didn't, actually. We were a little picky. It took us a minute. It's because, you know, like, mariscos were very common to eat, but, like, we would have more, like, Camarones, like I remember the first time I had oysters. Oh my gosh. Yeah, with like the tios. I just had my first oyster this year. Yeah. I'm 18. I remember like having sushi for the first time and it like blowing my mind because I was like, we usually do like carne asada and chicken like this. The go-to. <laughs> the go-to growing up. Oh my God, I felt like at one point I was gonna turn into a piece of carne. You like cooking a lot. You like experimenting a lot. That's something we got from our Definitely. grandma, by the way. Yeah. Huh. Todo al gusto. We don't measure anything. So sorry for everybody who's like, how many teaspoons of salt did she put? How many? Todo Whatever al gusto. fits in your hand. Like I always say. Whatever fits in your hand. Fingers. A pinch of your fingers. Two yeah. Tips. Where do you think your love for cooking came from? From them? I would carpool with dad and I'd get dropped off at grandma's at like four in the morning and she was up and cooking already, cooking dinner at like eight in the morning. Mm -hmm. I think just watching her cook and seeing you know, the love that she received from doing that. And she would always the satisfaction cook for she, the whole block. She would cook for the whole block. My grandma no, cooked es que la for... No, Lolita necesita. Uh -huh. You know, el otro día ella me trajo esto. Entonces, you know, she would be making salsa for literally the whole block. She would sandwiches make sandwiches for the for garbage kids, guy, the, the garbage mailman. Guy, everybody. Tortas for everyone. Everyone. But like the food that we ate always made me feel like a sense of home, you know? Especially when mom would cook, we'd get home from school and the dinner Sopita. would be ready. Mm -hmm. Sopa de fideo. Sopa de fideo. That was just... With a crap ton a of tapatio and lemon. A 10 minute hit. 
we always talk about our future families. That's something me and my sister since we were little, we've always talked about kids. Each other's kids. Each other's kids especially. Are there any like recipes that like you're dying to like make sure that like your kids carry on? Hopefully one day we could write it all in a book and get grandma to write it in a book before you that know. eat that special. That's actually yeah. Not a bad idea. We should totally do that. We actually got a voice recording one time. Of her explaining it? Explaining how to That's make so cute. tamales. Oh, her tamales are Amazing. so good. I spent most of my childhood in Inglewood. Do you have memories from Inglewood? Like, I do. A lot of them? From when we were living in the converted garage. I we remember changing your diaper. All six of us <laughs> living in a little like 10 by 10 room. Literally. Isn't that crazy? Laying on top of each other. Oh, the summers, it would get so hot. So hot. And then in the winter, because there was no insulation. It would get freezing. And no carpet, no nothing in that garage. It would get so cold. I remember I used to hate sleeping with socks, and I knew it was cold when we was I was sleeping with socks on. That's crazy, dude. And look at us now. But if you really think about it, we've moved about every two years. Every two years. Every two years we've moved. Never fails. It's not the house that makes the home, it's the people. Mm -hmm. So when we had a home to live in, or a garage to live in, or a family member's house to live, house in. To live in, it was always good, because we were together. We always say, you're rich if your fridge is full. That's how we grew up. I gave up my role as a big sister to kind of be a third parent in the house and go out into the world and help provide. How old were you when you started to realize, like, oh, my sister isn't home? I think it was like when I was like finally old enough to like really have that sister sister relationship because you were what, like 12 when you like started traveling traveling like mm -hmm. dawn every month doing something mm -hmm. but now I would say it's definitely something that I've gotten used to because it started when I was so young yeah but it never changes like you coming home is always like, whether she's gone for five days or gone for three months, it's always like, oh, Becky's home, you know? Yeah, the excitement is always there. The excitement is always mutual. there. And we're always like, what do you want to eat? <laughs> what are we making? <laughs> and whatever she wants is whatever we make. And I'm spoiled in that sense, for sure. What about for you? How was it like not being separated, but separate, you know, I mean, having to make that sacrifice. A, yeah, it's definitely, I was gonna say, it's definitely a sacrifice, I think, on, on all aspects. Like, in a sense, I gave up, you know, my role as a big sister to kind of be a third parent in the house and go out into the world and help provide, especially having such a close relationship with all of my family members. It was really hard on me to share myself with the world so early on. Like, I remember getting on my on a plane for the first time out of LAX and seeing Ita's house like from the window of the plane and being like, yo, I've watched airplanes take off from this airport so my whole nice. life and wondering where they're going or where they're landing from and now I'm on one. Like, this is wild. It never gets old. It never becomes something you're really like used to. I'm about to show all my cards here, but I'm extremely afraid of the dark. <laughs> And after many years of therapy, I've learned that that's my inner child still like being super present because you didn't get to live it. I didn't really get to like be a kid, you know, totally like I'm thinking in Spanish right now. I do not know why this happens every a now lot. and then. <laughs> yeah, something que como se dice en inglés que valía la pena. Like it was it was totally worth every every bit of sacrifice. Being the eldest sister and watching you guys grow up has been bittersweet because I feel like I would leave you guys one way and then I would come back and then you guys were like, <laughs> so different. oh, I have a boyfriend or I have a girlfriend or like, oh, I, this is my best friend. And like, it's people I've never met before in my life. And I'm like, hey, friends. Cool. You have friends. I'm so happy for you. But one thing that I was always looking forward to because I always like really admired how focused on school you all were, you, Alex, and Frankie. And I would always think to myself, wow, like I can't wait for the day once they're all finally like done with school so I don't be that like distraction um, that's like pulling them out of school to like come places with me, but like they're finally old enough to like come and travel and I don't know, see the world with me. And like now I feel like that you're 18 we're able to live and you're that. like graduating, like now you can travel with me and that is something that like 
I feel like I've waited my whole career for. Because <laughs> it's always so lonely. I was always out on the road by myself. And not only that, but like your career has also provided us a lot of opportunities, like even finishing school. It's not something that a lot of people like have the opportunity to do. And I always you know. make this joke, I'm gonna let everybody in on it, <laughs> that by the I time really my know. sister graduates, I'm gonna have three diplomas, Frankie's, Alex's, and Stephanie's. I did not finish high school. Don't get that confused to be a message that I'm saying, drop out. Oh, drop out of high school and become a pop star. It's so easy. It is not. Right. But through the sacrifice that I made and through the different route of education that I took, I was able to provide better schooling opportunities for my siblings. Because Lord knows, I mean, we can get to a whole conversation about what the public school system is like here in our city. But, you know, I think it, it changed a lot for all of us, all for of sure. Us. And now I learned everything through them. Do you believe in like past lives though? Like like reincarnation or something? Yeah, to an Apart extent. Of, you yeah. ever have like deja vu and you're like, yo, I've been I've here been, before. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I've had, since I was like little, I've always had, I don't know, thoughts like that. Like this feels oddly familiar. Were you a little old man? <laughs> I probably life. would have been a little old man. <laughs> Like a grumpy old man. Yeah. <laughs> she said, yeah. <laughs> he didn't even think Especially twice about it. Especially in the it. morning. That's another thing too. Like, I feel like in our culture, like growing up, drinking coffee oh, was like, our grandma yeah. would make like cafe de la olla. And you would drink that shit before going I to bed. I had coffee in my baba when I was like three years old. Like grandma was just that savage where my dad would be like, don't give the kids coffee. And next yeah, thing you know. Yeah, with your pan tostado and um, like toasted bread and then a little bit of mantequilla. Or the Ritz and crackers. Anyway. Butter. Butter. Or the Ritz crackers. And the, oh, and the Ritz crackers with the coffee. Mm. How does it feel when you see me doing acting stuff versus singing stuff? That's something I've always wanted to ask my siblings. Like, is it weird because like you know me? You're like, oh my God, she's totally acting right now. Or like, do you forget that I'm your sister because I act so good? <laughs> no, I mean, it is definitely different. I remember going on set to watch you act and I was like, okay, she knows what she's doing. But I think regardless whether it was acting or singing, you somewhat intertwined the two more adding like acting into your singing. Because mm -hmm. your creative is very like, it's not you, it's like a whole persona. Ooh. By the way, y'all, my sister can sing. She sings in the shower. Uh. <laughs> now for the fun stuff, prepping all of the vegetables. Do you remember the first time you ever saw me perform? I remember, was it City Walk? Yeah. City Walk, I think, was one of the first performances that I was like, whoa. That's my sister. Whoa. She dedicated a little song to me and everything. I Felt did, special. my first performance. A little Cheetah Girls moment. I sang a Cheetah Girls song. I have baby videos, like at Christmas time, for instance, and like the family living room, and everybody's gathered around, and it was always like a theme to like sing, sing a song for everyone, do a dance for everyone. Um, talent shows. Talent shows with the cousins. And so the idea of being on a stage and having an actual microphone in my hand versus a remote control, for instance, it's really cool. Let's see how you're doing it. Oh God. Terrible. It's just not even. Could be worse, could be worse. Look at the colors, so pretty. Oh, okay, how do you want me to use the hot pink? Uh, really small, like diced. Do you want it spicy? Yeah, I'm leaving some seeds because I kind of do want it to be a little, a little spicy, you know? The onion is going to be the one that's going to be tricky. Doesn't have to be pretty, y'all. As long as it tastes good, that's all that matters. Look at us being all professional. This is like practice for our cooking show one day. Oh no. Oh no. I know, I always get questions. Why do you make a cooking channel? 
like, oh, I don't even have recipes. <laughs> I like cooking being like a feelings thing though. You know, like in, um, in our household, which I'm sure in many like Latin households, specifically Mexican households, um, when my grandma would make her salsa extra spicy, oh we would ask her like who made her mad? Like, oh, like who are you mad at today? Because if she was mad, the salsa would be spicier. Super spicy. So funny. It's always blew my mind as a kid to know that like, you could cook the shrimp. In lime. In lime. By the way, y'all, my sister can sing. Hmm. Let me just blow over. I wanted to see her, her eyes real quick. Let me just blow up her spot. She sings in the shower. Ha ha. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> so bad. Oh, me and my mom jokes. Uh, I'll be killing it with the fellas with my mom jokes, oh, you know. No. We're gonna make the sauce that you put in the agua chile, and we're gonna do it with two jalapenos, two serranos, and two garlic cloves. And we're gonna esprimir, esprimir, esprimir all of these limes in there. Can't do it as good as my sister, because. Chicken arms. Chicken. <laughs> Chicken arms. Dude, isn't it crazy? We watched so many of these and now we're making one. I know. A made from scratch ourselves. Okay. Here we go. I think that's good. Oh, now it's stuck on my, now it's stuck on my hand. <laughs> You mad? Who made me mad? Mm. Yo, let's, that's let's talk spicy. About like my eyes are mm -hmm. watering. Type of spicy. Mmm, so good though. Mmm. Wait. See a little overhead How did you put shot? this on? <laughs> Here we go. Right. Oh my god. Yeah, she's, she's spicy. strong. Woohoo! Love that. Love that. That's our thing. Love, Love that. that. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Boom, bada boom, boom, boom. This looks so pretty. Dude, you killed it. You. 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 Us. Gotta hit him with a guau one time. Guau. Wow. You're so pretty. You're so pretty. That was so cringe. Was You're so pretty. pretty. I think we should go sit down. Yes. And enjoy. Oh, well, that was fun cooking with you. I loved it. I loved every second. Even of though it. we do it often. Okay, right, let's do this. Mm. Dude, oh. we got down. I think we should go in with the Doritos now. You gotta pick a, a full one. A full one. A whole Doritos. I know you did not just call it Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> mm. It does something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're so pretty. You're so pretty. That was so cringe. Was You're so, so pretty. pretty. But we do that. We are we cringe. We do that. But we do that. Let's That's be honest. Like, are you really yeah. sisters if you're not cringe? Yeah. We hype each other up. Yeah, we're like each lot. other's hype girls. Yeah. Oh, my favorite thing to do is like when I'm in a fitting and I call you a mom. Oh and I gosh. know I'm like filling an outfit, <laughs> and they'll just be like, "Damn, yeah. girl, Miss Girl, you looking good." I'll be like, "Yeah, okay, thanks. That's why I called you." <laughs> well, I definitely have to say I do have fangirl moments, even though you are my sister. I what? still go back, go through the YouTube videos, the performances. I did not know that. I just like two days ago rewatched probably like performances even from like 2014. Do you think Grandma would be proud of our? I think even without tasting it, she'd be bad. This is true. Because we did it together. We cleaned mm -hmm. up together. Yes, we, we did. did it all together. So proud of you and everything that you've accomplished. Oh, thank so, you, sister. So nice. I love you so much. It's so crazy, man. We've come so far. Definitely. All of us. I hope people 
even just like people watching this at home, like yeah. just not taking, you know, their close loved ones for granted, mm -hmm. their family members for granted, their friends, the people who are there for them, just knowing that you're not alone, you know? It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Very beautiful. Well, sister, thank you so much for joining me, cooking with me. It means everything to me. I know it's not the first time we've done this, and I know in my heart, of course, it's not the last, mm -hmm. but it is the first that we get to do this with you guys at home. So thank you guys for joining us. And to that, I say, ceviche! <laughs>